Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're continuing with the three months of modal logics, a sequel to 100 Days of Logic, looking at temporal logic and combining tense operators. Okay? If you haven't watched the previous video on tense operators, I would highly suggest you do that now. So, many of the other modal logic terms are controversial when placed in succession. It is unclear what it means for something to be necessary that it is necessary, or obligatory that it's obligatory, let alone possible that it is necessary, or obligatory that it's permissible. This is the whole debate between S4 and S5. Check out my original video on the modal logic basics for more information. Yet, tense operators, unlike these other operators, are going to have much more intuitive explanations when they're placed in succession, all right? I think of it in terms of a timeline. And note the caveat, assume that precedence is transitive, linear, and irreflexive. We're going to take a look at what exactly all of those things mean. We've talked about transitive and irreflexive before. We haven't talked as much about linear in a future video. But for now, don't worry about that and just think about a timeline. And Take instant t to be now. So, if you have the statement p, p, t, that means that at some point in the past, from now, p was true. So, p, p is true at instant t, right now. And therefore, some instant in the past, p is true. It doesn't have to be that instant. It can be any of those instants in the past. GPT means that at time t, GP is true, or at time t, it will always be the case that p. So, for every instant after now, p is true. Hopefully that's clear. HFPT. So now we're going to get into some kind of the combinations of terms. So that means that at right now, HFP is true. And so what we're going to do is we're going to analyze the farthest out term first. We're going to get rid of that h, and we're going to say that fp is true at all instants before now. So that means at the very first instant, all the way up to the instant right before now, fp is true. Well, what does that mean? That means that at some point in the future, either past now or right now, p will be true. Note that while p could be true at some point before now, because the instant directly before now is going to have kind of a future p is true, p is true at some point in the future, p has to at least be true now or some point in the future from now. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense, because we're just going to get more complicated. So gppt means that gp p is true right now. So it's going to always be the case that at some point in the past, p was true. That means that for all instants after this one, at some point in the past, p was true. Which could mean that some point before now, p was true. But it could also mean that right now, p is true. Because we don't have a past p at this instant now. The first past p that we definitely have is at an instant right after now. So it could be the case that p was true now and not true at any other point in time. Hopefully, once again, this is making sense. We're going to do a couple more examples to try to clarify it. So, p, 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 t, or it was at some point in the past, the case that it was at some point in the past, that p was true from now, instant t, means that, so we have p, p, p right now at instant t. It means that past p, so p was true at some point in the past, is the case at some instant before now, and then some instant before that instant, p was true. So if we have immediate successors, remembering back to kind of our properties of precedence, it means that p isn't necessarily true at the instant right before now, but it's true at some instant before some instant before now. Okay? f p p t means that at some point in the future, it was at some point in the past the case that p. So that could mean that at some point in the future, 
it was the case that P, which in turn could mean that P happened before now, P happened after now, or P happened right now. So FPPT doesn't give us too much information other than kind of at some point in the timeline, basically before the end of time, P was true, is or will be true. We're going to get more complicated, so I apologize if you haven't been following so far. Try to watch the rest of this video again. It's a pretty complicated concept, but hopefully the timeline is helping make sense of this. So FPF. P means that at some point in the future, it was at some point in the past, at some point in the future, the case that P. So that means that at some point in the future, it was at some point in the past, it was at some point in the future, P. Which could mean that at some point directly in the past from that instant, it was at some point in the future, P. Or it could mean right now it would be P. Or it could mean that at some instant farther in the past than now, it would be the case that P. And P itself could be true at some point in the past from now, at now, or at some point in the distant future. Once again, hopefully that makes sense. There's a lot of options with this, just as there were a lot of options with the previous one we just saw. The more weak tense operators you add, the less information you're probably going to get. HGPT means that right now it's the case that it has always been the case that it was going to always be the case that P. So at all moments before now, it's going to always be the case that P. Which means that at every moment after that first moment in time, P is the case, including now and including any moments in the future. GHFPT means that it was going to always be the case that it has always been the case that P is going to be the case at some point in the future. So at all moments after now, it has always been the case that at some point in the future P was going to be the case. And at all moments before the final moment in time, at some point in the future P was going to be the case. And basically all that means is that at some point, not the first moment in time, P is the case. So P could be some point in the past from now, it could be now, or it could be some point in the future. Note that a lot of these, once again, when we add those weak tense operators, seem to lose information, or we don't know as much about P. But there's still tenses that can be used, and there's still kind of a salient way for us to interpret these, which is the important piece here. Okay, a caveat, as I mentioned. This is a good way to help you understand how these predicates function, but for it we are assuming a couple things about our timeline, naming that, namely that it is linear or connected, basically that there are no branches, that it's transitive, and that precedence is irreflexive. Those relations are going to look very different if any of those things is changed. But don't worry if that's confusing right now. In the next couple of videos we're going to look at some different properties of time and the ways that we can construct these in kind of axiomatic systems to understand what the properties of precedence and what the properties of time are. All right, but before we get to all that, we're going to do a little bit of a comparison between alethic and temporal modal logic. Watch this video and more here at carneades.org and watch a new video every single day for 100 days with the three months of modal logic. Stay skeptical, everybody.